Hey everybody, welcome back to Link's Cast. I'm Matt. And I'm Tyler. I we remembered. Like, like every week we remember to do it the right, right way. I'm going to comment on it because it's so rare. Uh, yep. Eventually it'll become the point where we actually do it right every week and then I won't. it won't be such a rare thing. But uh, as of right now, it's still pretty rare. Yeah, and then we'll get those comments of people being like, um, why do you keep saying that you're doing it right? You always do it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, then all you got to do is remember the first time we started doing it this way and you realize how wrong we actually got it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure at one point we didn't remember our own names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's happened. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is the Linux cast. We talk about Linuxy things, which is surprising given the title of the show. Uh, I know. I mean, there's going to be that one stoner out there that comes in and says, mm, what are the shows about? Mm. <laughs> I bet you it's about cooking. <laughs> it's definitely a cooking show. He's like, where are all the eggs? <laughs> like, like, dude, this is chopped, right? <laughs> <laughs> which one? So if, if this is the cooking show, which one of us is Martha Stewart? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, uh, definitely. De well, wait, wait, hold on. Which one of us likes butter more? That, that's the answer. Well, I mean, you you are from more south than I am, so you almost have to fry things more often. It's literally in the job description of being from below Ohio. Well, okay. So one of my favorite things is biscuits and not like the, the European biscuits. I'm not talking about like some bullshit cookie here. I'm talking about that like nice fluffy biscuit. Like and then that covered in butter and then with honey. Oh my good lord. It's the best. So yeah, I guess I'm Martha Stewart here. And Martha Stewart. All right. Well then I'll be I'll be Gordon Ramsay because I got the anger problems. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the, the the show is literally like five seconds in. We've already gone way off. <laughs> All right. So Tyler, what have you been doing this week in Linux? Well, um, I have been focused on remaking a lot of my thumbnails, um, or at, at the very least, I've changed up my thumbnail like template, and I think I've really found something that I actually like looks really good. They're very pretty. Um, Thank you, man. Uh, I, I think they're coming out a lot better. Um, I've actually gotten ahead on videos, which is like awesome. Like, I mean, <laughs> as anyone, anyone out there who makes videos can attest, getting ahead on videos is not an easy thing. Um, I don't expect to maintain it for a while. Um, but I've, all, uh, I've also got the time this weekend that I'm going to be uh, put into working on the wagon. So I'll have it finished this weekend or at the very least have the structure and everything ready to start putting like stuff in for the rabbits and putting like laminate down or not, not well. Yeah. Laminate um, down on the inside. So it's like a much better sleeping floor uh, or place to sleep and everything. Uh, put a mattress on. Um, and then I also made merch for DT, which was super interesting. We'll see how like, see what he does with it. If anything, I just, I got him the file sent to him. Um, also found out that he will use discord to talk to people, which is interesting. I'm waiting for the day that he does pop into my discord or yours like that. That's going to be an insane day. I don't think he's going to pop into my discord. I have a tendency to piss him off every time I call him not bald. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it's not bald. He's like, he can, he can grow hair. Like, he just means I, he I, I don't know if you were in the stream, but like it was a, about two or three minutes after DT left the stream, um, uh, one of his patrons popped in, and uh, well, and my patrons popped in, and <laughs> he goes, he immediately goes in. He's like, "Stop, everyone, stop!" DT is bald. He's like, "I need y'all to look up the definition of bald." And he's like, <laughs> "I read out the definition." He goes, "See, see, he's bald." <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So. For me, like what I've done this week in Linux, I've, I, I have a few things I want to talk about, uh, including what I actually typed in the show notes. But first, I just want to say the last three days on the channel have been the best three days that I've ever had. Like we've tripled <sighs> views, like whoa, oh, had almost 400 new subs in the last three days. Um, oh, my. At God. one point, the views were up to 17,000 views in two days. Like, you know how it gives you 48 hour account? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been absolutely nuts. It's, it was the Pop OS video that just kind of went absolutely crazy. And then the Linus Tech Tips videos have just, uh, those things have been pure gold mines. 
like it's, it's absolutely nuts on the channel. So uh, if you are new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to the absolute madness that this channel is. Because you, you'll know the variants and videos that I post. Because yesterday I posted a six, seven minutes video ranting about the pronunciation of Gnome. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I watch. I watched a little bit of that video. <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever, and I've been getting my ass trolled so hard in the comments section. It's great. <laughs> I I don't think people realize that I was joking through the entire thing because I was acting like I was really mad. And shit, <laughs> it was great. Anyways, that's the kind of shit you can expect if you've subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, if you're just here watching, uh, definitely hit that subscribe button because, uh. There's some really good stuff. Like I have an hour-long polybar tutorial coming up. It is recorded. Uh, it's not all edited yet. It's taking me forever to edit, man. It's just forever. Mm -hmm. So probably sometime next week. But it is uh, really good, I think, at least so far. So if you if you want to go through and um, watch some tutorial on polybar, that's definitely coming up. I'm doing a lot more of that stuff. There's more distress to come, stuff coming up, and uh, we'll talk about Tyler's stuff when we get to the contact information but go subscribe to him too because he's got like I, I keep saying this like he's the, the freaking this close to a thousand like what 40 away now uh, less than oh yeah, <laughs> see so he's getting really close like maybe we, let's come on everybody is in the chat if you haven't already go subscribe to his channel right now I mean stop watching this nonsense go subscribe to his stuff <laughs> it's good stuff anyway come immediately then, right then come back. back you gotta come back because we've got some good stuff planned anyways uh, that <laughs> I just want to talk a little bit about the channel because it's been, it's been, it, it, I've been, I've been watching the the numbers just go up like, <laughs> like, like what's going on, man? I, That's I, incredible. And one thing I'll say is you definitely deserve it, man. Uh, You're pushing out some good videos. Like I appreciate that, but man, it's just it was really it's just absolutely shocking. Anyways, um, <laughs> um, it said I should do another Linux Mint should die oh. video. <laughs> And before I forget, because this is on Matt's channel, let me make this very clear. Because Matt is very smart, he has me hosting all of his merch on my uh, store. So if you want to pick up his merch, I don't know if he's sharing the link in the description right now. You can go over all of uh, in all of my very recent videos. I have the link for merch down there, and you can find his merch over there, and it supports this podcast. The, so yeah, the link to the merch store will be in the video description and the uh the show notes but it's not in the description of the live stream and so. you'll find like some really cool like arco hoodies over there that i made because matt loves arco and they're pretty nice so definitely yeah, go check them out good stuff definitely go go there anyways uh the other thing that i've been doing on linux this week is um i've been watching the the this guy i'm not sure what his name is i can never remember his name i think i can find it here real quick though uh, his name was uh, Hector Martin. Okay, he's uh, the the main. I think he's the main developer behind uh, uh, Asahi Linux. I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but it's the Linux that's meant for running on the M1 Max. And I've been watching his live streams where he's trying to get to work on the new M1s. Uh, I have no clue what he's doing. Right, I have no, I'm not a programmer, but man, is it really fascinating to watch him code. Uh, he's, he, he's got, he uses Kate as a, as a tech, as an IDE, which is, I mean, awesome. I mean, it's just like oh. random KDE, like he's a, obviously the biggest KD plasma guy ever. Cause he uses all KDE. So he, like he uses console as his tech, his, his terminal emulator. And, <laughs> like, um, and he has like, t he, he likes tabs the way I like workspaces. I mean, literally he has Oof. like 400 tabs in console open. Uh, like, I don't, it's probably not that many, but I mean, it's like the entire, like, you know how the tabs open up in console along the bottom? Uh, he yeah. has like, like dozens of them along the bottom of, of consoles <laughs> open. And in Kate, Kate has the ability to do tabs as well. And he has like tons and tons of tabs and they're side by side in a, in a split. Uh, it's awesome. <laughs> like, I have no clue what he's doing, but it's really cool. And he streams for like five hours at a time. And uh, it just kind of it, it's kind of awe inspiring about how much work goes into actually getting Linux to work on certain types of hardware, but also kind of gives you an idea of how much stuff there is in Linux that kind of all has to be worked on by someone. Like there's someone mm -hmm. out there working right now on like the most random piece of of Linux things out there, and uh, it, it's kind of cool. <laughs> 
you know, it's just, it's kind of cool. Like, this is why we do this. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've been doing. I, I A link to the most recent live stream will be in the, the show notes. Uh, man, it was good. Like, I didn't watch the whole five hours because, I mean, I, I don't have that kind of time. But I kept coming back to it. Like, it's just so good. Anyways. So. <coughs> time to get rid of the COVID. All right. Anyways. <laughs> Cough it out. Yeah. So if you want to get in contact with us, we're moving on to the contact information. We're only 12 minutes in. It's a, it's a, uh, an astonishing surprise. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, you can do so. Follow me on Twitter at the Linux Cast. You can follow me on uh, Odyssey at the Linux Cast. And you can support me on Mastodon. I've actually been using Mastodon for the last couple of days. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. at Dr. M Dub on there. Uh, I have the, that link will be in the, the show notes in the video description as well. Uh, I'm actually kind of finding that I like Mastodon now because you can actually go through and Im there are bots on Mastodon that will allow you to follow people on Twitter. So you can oh, okay. go through and follow all of your Twitter stuff on Mastodon and you never have to visit Twitter. It's kind of awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's I haven't gone through and done, like I haven't done, gone through and done everybody yet, but it's actually kind of cool. Uh, anyways, that's on Mastodon. You can contact us via email, email at the linuxcast.org. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. I'll thank all the current patrons at the end of the show. And like I said earlier, Tyler, who goes by Zany Online, has both an Odyssey and a YouTube channel and a merch store. Those links will be in the video description below. Go subscribe to him. He's awesome. He does a lot of cool stuff. Um, obviously, I mean, he's here, right? I'm, I'm talking to him like he's like not in the room. Uh, anyways, <laughs> you can also subscribe to the LinuxCast on YouTube at youtube.com. Slash Linux cast. That was the best contact information sec section I've ever done in my life. Uh, I'm gonna record. I, I'm gonna cut that part out and use it every single time. Never do one as again. you should. All right. Anyways, uh, you know what I didn't do before we started is actually open up the links to the uh, the the news. <laughs> so Tyler, what is your news this week? Uh, mine is actually it's <clears throat> to do with open source jobs. Um, and, uh, of course my link is just now loaded up. Awesome. Uh, it took and me, I had it open. It, like it took me a while to open it too. It took a while to load. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you Linux Insider for getting some really good servers, man. Yeah. Yeah. Talk, go talk to Linode. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they can help you out a way better. Give you a hundred percent speed. Uh, but so apparently there is a, a lot of struggle in the industry now finding, um, you know, open source or filling open source positions. Um, and it's sort of interesting. Um, but apparently there's a lot of, um, great jobs that are, you know, either already here or opening up in the like, cloud space uh especially when it comes to open source because obviously companies like linode um companies like like linode and linode themselves are growing um if you haven't heard like um i believe it's linode is rolling out um they're upgrading all of their uh, data centers with nvme drives and it's no extra cost to you just if you already have a server with them it's getting upgraded to an nvme uh no extra cost whatsoever. So a lot of these companies are growing, expanding. There's new jobs in them. Um, and essentially what I'm saying here is, is according to this article, if uh, you're super into open source and you want to get a good job in the field, go out there and hunt for it. Because there's, there's a healthy job market uh, for open source jobs. Um now, of course, there's always going to be complaining, you know, um, about there not being enough people, but open source is very much in, in high demand, which yeah. is good to hear. Well, I mean, it's good to hear that there are jobs, but it seems to be like every industry these days can't get enough people, um, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, not to get into the whole politics thing, but really weird things how there's still like 600,000 people without jobs. <laughs> Like, let's, yeah, like go get a job. It's okay. Do we? I know we live in the weirdest time. Like there's super high unemployment, and all the companies are like, "Please come, you know, we need, we need to get." Employees. All right, so this is totally off topic. But did you hear that Upper New York is offering snowplow drivers three hundred dollars an hour to to go to for their seasonal jobs up there? Like, okay, well you want? Sorry, mom, dad, I'm leaving. I'm going to New York. 
<laughs> three hundred dollars an hour, and some of them times those. I mean, they're gonna work some overtime because you know. I mean, they get like twelve thousand feet of snow in Buffalo, New York. I mean, <laughs> Dude, our our school bus drivers around here are getting. They're offering so it's free CDL training, so you get free professional like bus driving and um, also like uh, truck driving training. And then they start you out at $28 an hour, which that's literally about four times like minimum wage and maybe even more. No, that's, that's, that's four times. It's minimum wage is seven something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, About four times. And you, you also get, they give you a six month raise or what was it? After your six months there, they give you like, um, can't remember what it's called, but something. It's like a. Uh, I can't remember what they call it, but they give you a thousand dollars after six months, which is this is right here is why everything's so expensive. <laughs> like you, you can't pay somebody three hundred dollars an hour and then not have inflation. I guess like that's yeah. like, that's that's. I mean, I failed economics in college a couple times. <laughs> but yeah. I'm pretty sure I understood that much. Uh, anyways, that's completely off. Um, that's. <laughs> I like guess not even not not part of what we should be talking about, but, that, but still. Well, I mean, yeah. it did sort of relate to the to my article on jobs in open source. Those were not uh, bus driving is not an open source job. I don't think I don't think school buses <laughs> operate on on Linux, but who knows? <laughs> One day we might be talking about an article that says you know school buses in can- Canada are getting converted to like Linux chips. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there has to be some kind of open source software drivers in a in a like the electric buses or something. I'm sure there has to be. Uh, Probably. Anyways, uh, yeah. Um. So in other words, the world is on fire, and we're all gonna be paying twelve million dollars for a loaf of bread. Yep. <laughs> uh, we're screwed. Anyways, uh, on that happy note, let's move on to mine. So, uh, this was big news, obviously, and I made. Uh, that Pop! OS video that I made blew up, but I wanted to cover it a little bit in the podcast itself. System76, which makes Pop! OS, has decided to abandon GNOME and move to their own desktop environment, which is going to be built in Rust, because, I mean, what else could it possibly be uh, exactly. written in? I mean, I mean, please, build a desktop environment in C. Are you nuts? Nobody's yeah. ever done that before. That's, disgu- that's disgusting. <laughs> I mean, gross. seriously, I'm just, I just threw up a little bit in my mouth because <laughs> just, the, just the thought of building a desktop environment in anything but Rust is just—it's—it's it's horrible. I mean, it's terrifying. It'd be like a a, a Halloween movie. <laughs> Anyways, we really don't know much about this new uh, desktop environment other than it's going to be built in Rust. It's going to look basically the same. It's going to be not be using GTK, obviously. And it's go- they're going to be getting as far away from GNOME as possible. Now, they've had many problems with GNOME, and we've talked about some problems that everybody seems to have with GNOME. But from a developer perspective, uh, they are really upset with the fact that every time a new GNOME comes out, all the extensions they use to make Pop! OS, you know, be pop os completely break so that's basically their biggest problem is that they want to have more control over their desktop memory which i can which completely understand right yeah yeah and it it, it, it's not even surprising either because i mean if you listen to any other project that bases their stuff off of gnome all of the time that's that's all of their complaints they're like every time uh, gnome updates it breaks stuff that we use it's it's a common thing gnome is not focused on the other projects based off of them whatsoever. They'll make a change and break compatibility with stuff left and right. Now, the question that I have when it comes to this desktop is, will it keep the same appearance that it has now? I hope not. According to the Reddit post, it will look almost precisely as it looks now. Mm. Um, But... I mean, they said it's still early days, so who knows? I mean, maybe it will, they'll make some updates, but they just changed to this look and feel. That's not going to go anywhere, I don't think. I don't care what it looks like. I think my opinion is that it's just great that GNOME is finally being abandoned by so many. Mm-hmm. I, I really hope that Ubuntu is next. Like, I just really hope that even if Ubuntu does something stupid, like build their next desktop environment in Flutter, which is like Google Lite, uh, I, I wouldn't care just because I, I hate go, GNOME, the people behind GNOME that much. Like, 
Like I tried GNOME for like a week. GNOME is actually an okay desktop environment. Like it's fine if that's the way you want to use your computer with zero customization and all that stuff. There are a lot of people out there who say, well, what do you guys say, Tyler? What? Did I, you did I, you just I made, say GNOME is acceptable? I made a video that said exactly that that it, that for I, people who want just a simple computing experience, which there are people out there like that. I'm not one of them. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Tyler's like, what? I mean, who the fuck are you? What would you do with Matt? <laughs> well, I know. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, Matt's been replaced. <laughs> like, I'm a pod, I'm a pod person. But no, but, but I mean, there are people out there who enjoy that type of thing where they just want to get their work done. Like that Linus tech, to, like Linus in the 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 LTT thing. He was talking about how he wants one good way of doing things. Which, well, first of all, that's not Linux. I mean, there's 12 ways of doing everything on Linux. You're just gonna have to get used to it. Uh, mm -hmm. But otherwise, to, what really what that he would be perfect for GNOME because there's literally one way of doing everything in GNOME unless you open the terminal up or yeah. you know install tweaks. Which you know we he'd have problems doing that anyways. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But Let's be real. The, the point is, I like, I don't know. I think it's good that GNOME is being left behind because I, 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 not necessarily because I want GNOME to like suffer and die, not necessarily, but more because I would hope that uh, if there are less people supporting GNOME and they feel less like they're ho a bunch of hot shit, uh, the, maybe they will reform their ways and become good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Start listening to the community, like, I don't know, reasonable Probably. people. <laughs> You're the one smoking here, man. <laughs> hey, and, and I'm still being reasonable. That's the crazy part. Hey, like we're on our high on something, man. That's just never going to happen. I don't. I think they'll be perfectly happy with Fedora being the only people, only distro that uses GNOME. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although, I mean, I'm sure like RHEL uses GNOME too because it's basically the same shit. Anyways, um, yeah. So I, I also think that it's good if this ends up being good. Like, like if if this new Pop OS thing ends up being good and they're going to distribute that to the community, there's a possibility that we have an, like an extra option. You know what I mean? That's not written in Qt. That's not written in GTK. And f while I bemoan fragmentation a lot, I also think more options are kind of good uh, yeah. when it comes to desktop environments, especially good ones, because they're not really – there aren't a lot of good ones uh, mm -hmm. that are supported by big corporations. And – at least in terms of being supported by a bunch of developers that have money and resources behind them. So, um, well, look, as much as fragmentation and options causes confusion, it's really good because if you try something and it doesn't work out for you, you've got plenty of other options and they're all different. So I laughed during that, uh, that first LTT challenge video because the first thing he Linus complained about was, there's too much choice on Linux. And then he discovered why choice is so good because Papa West crashed on him and he was able to go to Manjaro. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe there's a good reason to have 12 different distros that you can choose mm -hmm. from. You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, because just... if, if one team isn't focusing on one area and you can't use your computer without that one area, like, I don't know, you know, it not, it's still working when you don't follow the most basic thing that anybody will tell you to do after you install Linux update. Right. But, you know, like you've got other choices. There are definitely other projects out there that are like, let's make sure that our system does not crash when we have people loading it up. Like, you know, elementary OS used to be that way. Hopefully they've reformed and gotten better, but I haven't checked them out recently. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know if their app store still has probably doesn't have Firefox in it yet. So yeah, uh, yeah. until that happens, <laughs> well, I mean, they've been adding stuff from Flathub, so maybe it, maybe it's better. Who knows? All right. So moving on to the main topic. So this wasn't really one of our challenge videos. This wasn't one where we spent a lot of time, you know, challenging each other to do something. But we call it the five app challenge. And what we, we were trying to do here is we were, we, we were challenged to both set out to find five applications that the other person hadn't ever heard of. And for each application that you surprise the other person with, you get a point. The person with the most points at the end wins. Now, I highly expect us to both have like four points uh, at the end of this. Um, so 
it's not much of a challenge. But the point, really, the point, my point behind thinking this up was, if we can find some applications that are kind of cool that nobody's ever heard of before, or maybe few people have ever heard of before, it'll be kind of fun. So that is what we're going to be doing first. And uh, this should be very interesting because uh, I have all the tabs open here, but I have no order to them whatsoever. Uh, these are, this is going to be uh, Randall all. <laughs> this is going to be rando as much as possible. So the first app up on our list, and this one, uh, actually, how do we want to do this, Tyler? We just want to go back and forth. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter. All right. Well, you want to let's go. Uh, let's go with one of yours first, number five on your list, which is oh, this one here, I believe. So Tyler, you're number five on the list. All right, so um, by the same list. Otherwise, you're going to be starting from the top. I'll be starting from the bottom. <laughs> yeah, five should be lollipop. Correct. Yep. Awesome. Um, yeah. So lollipop is um, it's 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 a much more um, um, well integrated GNOME music player. Uh, than rhythm boxes, which most distributions are going to come with rhythm box out, out of the gate. And um, Lollipop's much better. And um, I mainly picked this one because, uh, for one, it wasn't too hard to find slash remember. Um, like, I've never used it, but I had heard about it. And at first, I thought it was a Linux distro. Um, and But then I heard it referenced again, and it was talking about it being for GNOME and a music player. And I was like, oh, and the then I copied it for here. I thought it was also a great option because I was like, it's for GNOME. Matt won't know a damn thing about it. That turned out to be not true. No, I've, <laughs> I've actually used Lollipop before uh, as a, when I was using it, like a GUI version of a, a, like iTunes. When I was searching for that. Um, it's hilarious because my pick of the week is from the GNOME Foundation. So, <laughs> 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 so uh, you you think my uh, uh, my uh, irritation with GNOME is much wider wider and broader than it actually is? But yeah, I've used this one before. It's good. Uh, I think it's probably one of the better ones, uh, especially if you're using GTK. There's a couple for Qt that are good too. Uh, but yeah, uh, just use a terminal app. I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah, it's much better. All right, so that is uh, lollipop. It's a good. It's a good one. So uh, my first one. So I'm gonna close this so that, so that I can get rid of some of these tabs because I got just uh, like this is ridiculous. Okay, so my first one. Uh, I'm just gonna go with this one. Deluge. So we might as well get rid of. So this one, one you also have heard of, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So yep. this is a um, a BitTorrent app. It's lightweight. I. It has a. It's called a web UI or whatever. However, <laughs> it's really weird. But anyways, it's available cross-platform. It's just a different uh, 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 BitTorrent client than what you would, you know, like transmission or uh, what was it, the Q QT, QT, what's the QT one? QT Torrent? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyways, that's the lose. I think I've heard of that. It's the one that comes with KDE. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not a big torrenter anymore. I used like it used to be, but not so much anymore. Um, anyways, that's Deluge. I don't, I get, their website does not show a, excuse me, random belch. Anyways, the, the, um, <laughs> the, the web, their website does not show a, like a, like a screenshot. So. Of course, because that would be too much to ask. I mean, pictures? Hello? Pictures? <laughs> pictures? <laughs> Anyways, that is Deluge. So your next one is going to be, uh, Test Disk. I've never heard of this before. Mm -hmm. uh, test disk is pretty neat. It's a completely FOSS, so free and open source data recovery tool that you can use. Um, and I don't know on what different platforms it's available for, but it seems it seems pretty competent. It seems like it's available on um, a few different ones: Windows, um, BSD, SunOS, macOS, mm -hmm. Linux, DOS. So I mean, it's available for I, DOS. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not sure that it's available for everything, but for most things, you should be able to use it to recover data. Um, and it seems like it's pretty well touted, like a lot of people use it. Uh, so, yeah, um, that's a pretty handy tool you might just want to keep in your repertoire. Yeah, it looks really cool, but I would also like to challenge anyone out there who's listening to this. If you still run DOS, I'd like to hear from you. <laughs> because seriously, man. 
and I, and I don't mean like I I've in, I just installed this DOS so I can talk to you about it. I mean like you actually use DOS. Yeah. Like, like I would like to meet this person because you're obviously a special person. <laughs> you're one of God's <laughs> special people. You know, <laughs> and like, DOS like you can still you, you'd it have to be. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to be using it for some like hyper specialized like use case, like Games. like. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know about that because that's not really even running DOS. Like, you're really just running an emulator. Like, I mean, if you want to play a game, you're just running DOS. Like, you're probably running DOS Box, be, like just as an emulator. Yeah, it'd be like, it'd be like running the um, like the Mac OS Nine emulator or whatever. Mm-hmm. For whatever yeah. reason, why you would want that, but whatever. Okay, so my next one is uh, let's see here. We'll go with uh, oops, that's the wrong one. Uh, Bookworm. Okay, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bookworm is a free and open source ebook reader. Uh, I'm not sure what it's written in, but it supports EPUBs, PDFs, MOBIs, uh, all the basic formats for uh, you know ebooks. So if you're going to read an ebook on your uh, Linux machine, this is a cool and it looks really nice. I mean, it looks really nice. It looks is is very very well designed. It, it looks like, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like it was designed for elementary OS, uh, mm-hmm. but you can install it from pretty much anywhere. I believe it's in the AUR, so if you wanted to install it on Arch, you could do so. Uh, and anyways, uh, the one the thing that I was thinking of this for was, uh, I wonder how well this works on those that new Jing pad that came out, because that'd be really cool, because I'd love to get one of those and be able to read my books mm-hmm. on there. That'd be cool. Anyways, that's yeah. Bookworm. Okay, so we're flying through these. Uh, let me close some tabs here. So I close that. I can close this. And uh, I can close this. All right, See, so we're just making up for all those times that we went over with the podcast. Yeah, we're just going, going right fast. So your next one is called uh, Brackets. Mm-hmm. Um, brackets is a fantastic um like lightweight ide um it's more like modern and uh for one thing it's FOSS, which is awesome and it's particularly made for someone who's trying to get into web development um so if you're someone who's wanted to get into web development um you've lo- you're looking around for ides and you want something that's completely FOSS. um as far as i know brackets makes a very good option um I, I just as far as i know it's just not super popular like it's um i mean i had never heard of it but it seems like a very cool tool um again completely open source um uh, seems very flushed out but it's just not super popular um at least to me i hadn't heard of it i never heard of it either um it does look really cool it's amazing how many text editors there are out there i mean like everybody like if you don't like your text editor the right one <laughs> yep uh rogue in the in the chat says that brackets is no longer maintained but that wasn't a requirement for the challenge no. so um and also, that doesn't mean that it won't ever start getting maintained. Or maybe there's a fork of it out there. I mean, literally, this is open source software. That's what, that's what happens. Okay, so um, my next one is going to be uh, really weird, and neither of us really know what it's for. Uh, but, because we, we were talking about this beforehand, so that I could open up the links. But the next one I have is called G-Plates. Now, G-Plates describes itself as a tectonics program to manipulate reconstructions of geological and paleogeological, geographic, paleogeographic, that's a big-ass fucking word, man, I can't just, (laughs) features through geological time, interactively visualized vector, raster, and volume data, uh, Pi G-Plates is the G-Plates Python library, get fine-grained access to G-Plates functionality in your Python scripts, so, uh, the way this was described described to me on Reddit is that this is for world building applications for games, uh, but um, I would both Tyler and I think that this is kind of also for scientists. So yep. um, just from the things that it says here on the on the on the website, it is open source and uh, free and open source software. Uh, it's just, I mean, this thing exists. <laughs> it's really <laughs> weird, uh, but also kind of cool. So no matter what you use it for. It's cool. Uh, I doubt very much that I could actually probably even get it running on my computer because it, oh, prob- 
it looks like it takes quite a bit of data in order for it to actually work. But um, it really kind of looks cool. So if you're I would be very surprised if it doesn't take it like uh, take advantage of like CUDA or something. I mean, it probably does. But uh, anyways, that is G plates, uh, and it's one of those ones that not, neither one of us have ever heard of before. <laughs> so uh, I, I, talk about random apps. So that's uh, G plates. So uh, your next one is going to be uh, let's see what's this next one, uh, subliminal. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one's it's pretty easy straightforward to understand very uh but very useful though it's um it's a good uh it, it's a good looking open source um tool for getting your um like movies and tv shows downloads like um subtitles and it i mean it, i mean for one it looks you know pretty good and you know it just accomplishes the task it's got a really nice github that's or uh, believe it's GitHub, um, but pretty straight, simple, um, straightforward. Explains the whole program, and yeah, I mean, what more could you want? Looks like it has really good documentation too. So cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I also edited metadata because my movie collection is horrendous when it comes to <laughs> metadata. It was just yeah. so bad. Uh, okay, so that is subliminal. I'd never heard of that one either. So that one's there. Okay, so my next one is uh, this should be. We each have one left, right? Uh, yes. Okay. My next one is Eagle Mode. Now, I have some screenshots of this thing. This thing looks weird. <laughs> okay, so if you wonder what this thing is, it's a graphical file manager. Uh, and it describes itself as a zoomable user interface. And I'm showing some of the screenshots, screenshots of this right now. Uh, that Basically, you get into this thing by... Uh, zooming into directories with your mouse like it's really weird uh, i don't know why you'd want to use it but it exists um and uh it's like it's weird it has like i don't know if you can see, like has tons of little buttons on it and stuff but you you know zoom into it using your mouse and i don't know what you'd use it for but it like i said it exists uh now if you watch brody i believe he featured this on his channel. Uh, I only just now kind of remembering that, but uh, yeah, this, I mean, it's just, it's weird. It's the weird, one of the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So <laughs> weird. Uh-huh. Looks, it, it looks like it was from like the early nineties. Well, it does. And it, the thing is, it's still being like developed and stuff. So as far as I know, it's still being developed, but it, the, the, the UI is just the weirdest thing ever. Um, so yeah, yes, that is, is, that is Eagle mode um so the next one and your last one is called uh, laverna mm-hmm. okay tell us about and, this uh this one is really nice it's a good uh modern open source um markdown editor and so uh you i mean dude it's it's a great note-taking app um you you can go in here do all of your stuff that you want to it it looks good um, it's not super big on resources or anything. You know, it's, it's not like one of those electron note taking apps. It's just a big old bloated web app. Um, it's, it's pretty nice. It does look nice. Um, I never heard of this one either. So, uh, out of all of them, the only one that I heard of for you was lollipop and you had heard of deluge, right? That's it. So we yep. just got four points. We're both winners. Yep. Yeah, it's too bad that I didn't win because I had some really good gloating, uh, gloating topics to go over. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, we we flew right through those. So a couple things that I noticed in the chat. Somebody up here said that um, the Japanese banks. I think uh, I'm sorry, I don't I didn't catch your name. Uh, the Japanese banks in uh, use old IT systems and that they used uh, floppy disks and DOS still there, which um. <laughs> It really makes me want to. Really makes me want to go banking in Japan. I'm just. Yeah. I'm just saying those things are really secure. I'm just. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Uh, somebody else said that their landlord, I think, uses DOS. Um, which okay. Um, I also want to give him my money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. Let's see. So, um, I was going through some of the chat here. Some somebody said that the the eagle might that eagle mode might be good for people with disabilities. Maybe it's going to depend on how scalable those graphics are because 
you know, yeah. uh, the, the thing about you don't want that thing to get really big. I'm not sure how big it gets. <laughs> um, and also, is it customizable? Because that thing doesn't look all that great. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, <laughs> file manager more with like voiceover capability seems more like what you'd need um yeah. so yeah that is uh, uh somebody said zero out of ten ui for that eagle like yeah that's not a very good <laughs> but <laughs> i i think that was just i think they used it just for fun right i think that's what they did it for was to, to fun um yeah. yeah so anyways that is uh those are the 10 apps that we came up with uh, in the comment section of the video below, if you uh, aren't watching this live, like if you're watching this later, if you have some obscure apps that you'd like to share, leave them in the comment section. Tyler and I would love to check those out, but just remember, do not leave a link because YouTube will take that comment and just like Pac-Man, yep. you know, it'll just eat it right up. So, uh, no links. Anyways, uh, always interesting finding out new, new apps, um, of the ones that we shared today, um, the note-taking apps that you shared were uh, very interesting and might be worth a look at. Uh, the G plates thing, I don't think either of us have a use for. <laughs> no. Uh, the, no. Neither the eagle mode either, um, which is sad. But anyways, those are the apps. So let's go ahead. We're just flying to this episode. Uh, where are all the tangents? Where are the freaking tangents? I know. Yeah, this, is, this is rude. We're, we're, yeah, we're this is odd. We're, we're, we're depriving our audience of uh, tasty content. <laughs> anyway, so moving on to the apps of the week. I think actually I'm still on. Like, yeah. So where I'm actually still on the browser, so, but it's okay. Um, so I'll go first this week. So Seahorse is a application that will, is designed for managing encryption keys and password, but it's designed for the GNOME keyring. So if you use GNOME or a GTK-based uh, uh, desktop environment, you could use this in KDE as well, obviously, but um, basically what this is, is it's a password manager. It also is for encryption keys and stuff like that. So if you manage a whole bunch of uh, like GPG keys or you know stuff like that for... Uh, like your email or whatever, you can go through and use this to manage those as well, including passwords. Uh, it's not like this is this application is not the most complex password manager that you're ever going to find. Like it doesn't have a ton of features like Bitwarden or One Password or anything like that. But it's very simple. It looks and feels like it's made for GNOME because guess what? It was look it you know is made for GNOME. So uh, that is Seahorse. It's a uh, I don't know that I would ever use it because I use Bitwarden, but I was kind of going through and discovering some other password managers when I came across this, uh, and I'd never heard of it before. It was going to make my never heard of list, but I decided to just use it as a password man or a pick of the week. So uh, that's Seahorse. Uh, links in the video description. So Tyler, your pick of the week. Um, mine is Obsidian, and uh, Obsidian is a really good like text editor. Um, that you can get it it works um, it has a really good ui to it and it essentially you're just going to put like a local like a, a give it a local folder and then it uses plain uh plain text markdown files it's really nice like really really nice it comes in an app image flat pack snap um and then i'm sure it's an uh, you know it's available yeah obviously i mean everything is like, let's get real um or if not everything um almost everything all right yeah obsidian is great and i don't want to rush you but tyler we made a huge mistake we only did nine apps <laughs> we only did nine apps because there was an app that i had that didn't have a oh, web page or anything <laughs> that's right <laughs> okay so we're, we're kind of going backwards here like i like i wonder why i went through that so fast like because we only did nine apps <laughs> okay, so uh, I can't show anybody this because it's, uh, like I said, there's no website, there's no GitHub, I don't know anything about it other than I saw it, found it on a website. Uh, it's called, if I can get this up, it's called Giver. Now, as far as I know, this is in the Ubuntu repositories and the Ubuntu repositories only. It is not in the AUR as far as I can tell. I used the Paru to search for it. It's not there. Uh, basically what this is, is it's similar, if you've ever heard of an app called Snapdrop. Snapdrop is like a web-based application where you can share 
uh, files between like your phone and your Linux system. Like it's really cool because it's it's design Snapdrop is for like sharing between Linux systems is easy with Samba or SSH or whatever. But sharing between your phone and your your computer, like especially if you're on iOS, it's a little bit harder. This is mm-hmm. kind of like that, only it's native. Like you can download an app. It actually has like a GTK based app that you can download uh, if you can find the damn thing, uh, and <laughs> you can share files between uh, computers and phones that are on the same network. So. That is Giver, but I don't know if this this, this app actually exists. So uh, I, I I don't know if it counts. Uh, so maybe it was a good thing that we didn't cover it with the uh, with the other ones. Um, but the thing, like I said, it's not an AUR. I have no way of searching for it in a, the Ubuntu the Ubuntu repositories. I just know what the website that gave me you know that pointing me towards it said it was in it said it was in the Ubuntu repositories that could be an old article so maybe it was ages and ages ago mm-hmm. um maybe it's just you know not being developed or been pulled or something like that but I, I included it because it sounded really cool like I would love this application to download because I was going to download it like use this because I yeah. I could sh- like I hate setting up Samba like I can't stand setting up sham- Samba uh, I I do it but I don't like doing it um, so I'd love yeah. to be able to send files back and forth between this computer and that computer behind me without having to rely on Samba, but I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't find it. It's like the, the AUR has failed me for like the first time ever. <laughs> like, it's really weird. Why? Um, anyway, so that is, uh, uh, <laughs> like I was sitting here, I was like, why does it feel like we didn't do 10 apps? It's because we didn't do... 10 apps so uh yeah that's uh so if seeing as how we got how long have we been recording for we've been recording for oh we made it to an hour yeah we've been no we've well, wait, me, hold on. for me minutes. it's 48 minutes yeah so we, um, 48 minutes all right so in the in the chat if you have questions leave them we'll, we'll do a 10 minute question and answer session if if that's okay um, so if you have questions, yeah. uh, pop them into the, the the chat, and we'll 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 do some chatting. Um, yes, and um, because I am uh, very much like a child, I need to run to the restroom. I'll be back in like twenty seconds. Uh, so yeah, y'all put in your questions and keep I, Matt busy. I, I, I should have asked him if he needed to go potty before he, before we started. <laughs> what is tail sc- tail scale? What is that? You're you're so sick of Matt uh, always recommending uh, you know maps. I'm sorry about that, Milo. I really am. <laughs> oh, how is Emacs? That's a good question. Uh, I'll talk about this a little bit. All right. So my experience with Emacs so far has been um, okay. Uh, I still haven't dug too much into Org Mode and Org Room, which are the two things that are kind of preventing me from doing my next uh, video on it. I don't want to do my next video until I've talked about those a little bit or, you know, used them a little bit. So uh, that's what's preventing me from doing another video on it. So hopefully this weekend uh, I will get delve deep into those and use those for a little while before I can make a video on it. But overall, Emacs is fine. I don't think that I'd be very happy with vanilla Emacs because I would miss the Vim bindings. But it's fine. Uh, the thing is, and I'll talk about this in the video that I do eventually make, is that I kind of feel guilty using Emacs because I know that there's so much more to Emacs in the way that I'm using it. Because I'm just using it as a text editor. Right? Basically, right now, that's all I'm using it for is a text editor. And uh, it, it, it feels like you're driving a, a Lamborghini uh to you know work every day you know you, there's someone you, you don't you don't get a lamborghini for a a day-to-day car that you you know for, for daily commute you'd feel yeah. guilty if you spent that much money on a car and uh you know <laughs> had to pay the insurance on the car which is probably more than you know your house is worth and uh, you know you're not getting everything out of it. that's the way i feel with emacs i feel because yeah. there's so much there to emacs that i you know uh, I'm just not using, and I don't think I will ever use them because I, I'm, the only thing, like I said, I haven't checked out org mode yet. That's that's the rest of it. If I can, 
we get attached to org mode, maybe in my opinion will change. But right now, for me, it's just a a text editor that has a lot of features that I never use. It's like uh, using an IDE or something like that. I've never you don't used... you don't replace your Civic with a Rolls Royce. That's really what it is, right? You know <laughs> exactly. So that's a really good metaphor. I think I'm going to keep that. <laughs> All right. So, um, hey Matt, please check the packages in the repo. I don't. I'm. I'm going to need some context for that. I think he's talking about Giver. I didn't find a Giver repo. Like I, I searched for it. It's not even. It doesn't. Even, it doesn't even show up on on Google. Besides, like the article that points to it. <laughs> like, oh, okay. So, like, I looked. <laughs> like, I spent ten <laughs> minutes looking. I can't find it. Just te- text the Emacs package, and maybe you'll get inspiration. Oh, he's talking about Emacs. Yeah, I've looked through some of them, and I've enabled some. Like, um, the, the DT. So DT did a video this last week on Emacs, and I felt very uh, attacked by it because I'm pretty sure he was talking about me. Uh, at least in some of those things, like you're using Emacs wrong. Like, okay, f- first of all, I did learn about the daemon, which I thank him for that because I didn't know about the, the the daemon thing. So that's cool. It did start up Emacs faster, but I wasn't having a problem with Emacs starting up slow to begin with. It was fine. I'm not one of those people who care that if an application takes four seconds to op- to open up, I don't care. Four seconds isn't gonna, you know, it's not gonna ruin my day. Um, <laughs> it, I mean, probably if I was meaning to stick with Emacs, I'd probably get pissed off. But, um. It didn't really bother me, the, but the um, because I it, I made a rising video where I every time I needed to use a terminal, I actually you know opened a fucking terminal, uh, mm-hmm. and it turns out that Emacs has a terminal built in, but and he was like, uh, use vterminal. You want vterm is not actually enabled out of the box in e- Emacs, so he confused the shitload of people, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, you have to go through and you know enable that. So I did actually go through the uh, packages that you can a- enable in Doom Emacs, and I enable a few of them, which is cool. Um, I like that that exists. I think it's kind of a better way of uh, like doing plugins in Vim. Uh, but there's just so much shit there that I'm, I'm never going to use. Uh, what are you giggling about there, Tyler Meredith? I, <laughs> I just had to sneeze, and I didn't think I hit the mute button fast enough, and I was trying to make it quiet <laughs> and I sneezed and it was so loud it's the loudest I've ever sneezed usually when you have to go when you have to do something quiet that's when you're going to be really loud um, I didn't think I hit the mute button I'm very proud of myself yeah, you did a good job so um, yeah so the, those are just my initial thoughts on Emacs if you're looking for a video on it it's probably going to be a couple weeks still uh, I'm still and, and uh, Art Center asks if I've been using Space Max no I've been using Doom Emacs um, I I don't need to be confused more by using a different type of Emacs at this point in my life. I'm just gonna stick with what I have. Uh, you can literally set up most of the the Vim stuff in Emacs. I I know you can. Uh, that's why I'm using uh, Doom. Yeah, it just doesn't out of the box. Yeah. Um. The, the the thing is, and I've talked about this before, is it just makes me feel like I'm using Vim. The only difference is now that I ha- I have to open up a GUI in order to use my text editor, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Which and you have all this extra stuff that you don't necessarily want. Like, there's a Tetris game in Emacs, okay? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, like uh, everyone everyone who talks about Emacs, I, I I I know this is not what we were meant to talk about, and I um, I will probably have to reiterate all this stuff in the video. But everyone talks about how Emacs isn't actually bloated. Because all Emacs is is a Lisp interpreter, right? And that's mm-hmm. true to a point. But it also has all these things that are built into Emacs on top of that Lisp interpreter that are included. And it feels mm-hmm. bloated to me. Like, it's not bloated, but it is, it feels bloated. It has all these features, like a Tetris game that you don't need. It has other games that you don't need. It, it's like Vivaldi. You know, it has an <laughs> email client. My text editor doesn't need an email client. Like I haven't used the 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 M four E or whatever it's called for the the email. It's supposedly really good, and uh, I know that it's like an extra thing. It's like it's like a, a module on top of it, right? It's not actually part of the thing. You have to enable it and all that stuff. So it's not actually bloated, yeah. but it feels mm-hmm. like it's bloated because yeah. you don't th- when you use Emacs, you're not thinking, well, I'm gonna open up my Lisp interpreter. No, I'm opening up Emacs that has all this shit in it. Um, yeah. So, 
Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's the thing. Like every Emacs like guy is like laughing. They're like, "Well, duh!" Like it's because you're thinking of it like a text editor. It's like that's well, that's what I want. Like that's what I want out of. I just I just want a text editor. Yeah. The extra features so far, like I said again, haven't checked out org mode yet. Soon, uh, but so far, uh, Emacs is just a text editor for me, and mm-hmm. Vim is a better text editor than Emacs ever will be. It just is. Yeah. Um, Quir Timer in the chat says you can use Emacs in the terminal. I'm aware of that, but I've been shamed into, into, into not doing that because apparently that's the wrong way of doing it. Um, and then I asked, well, why does the terminal version exist? And that, hi, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, apparently the terminal version exists so that you can use it in a TTY. Um, so, yeah. I can understand why it exists then, because it, did you know when you edit, like the when you press E during your Grub boot up, and you go into the editor for Grub, that actually uses Emacs. No, I did not. Yeah, see, it does. Um, why it uses Emacs? Like seriously, Vi is right there. Vi is older. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. why? why and it's you... much, and it's much more like Text renowned, editor? like. Right. I mean, it's just weird. Um, Gavin says, I'm, I think you're mixing uh, Doom Emacs and Emacs itself. I I mean, I don't use just regular Emacs. I use Doom, so I don't can't really tell what's, you know, what's not. I used vanilla for like 30 seconds. Found a couple of key bindings and ran ran away. Like, Gavin's like, I, I don't know if you saw his last call. He's like, I give up at this point. <laughs> The, the Emacs people are very, very passionate about Emacs, and that's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with Emacs. Like, I make fun of them, but that's just because of their passion for it, right? They're, they make easy targets for for, for, for mirth, but um, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, Vim is my text editor, and I don't... Yeah. I, I have my plugins that I need. I don't add plugins that I don't need, um, and it doesn't have a Tetris game. You know, I keep coming back to it. It has a Tetris game. Why does it have a Tetris game? I don't know why. Well, I mean, the funny part about it is it's like, I mean, like when you really think about it, essentially when you're arguing about whether or not you should use Fim or Emacs, you might as well be arguing about like, well, I really like cheddar cheese and I can't believe that you would eat pepper jack. You, you like it. Come on, man. It's just preference. Like, yeah. And I'm not, like, I, I don't know whether or not that Tetris game is part of Doom or if it's part of Emacs. I don't know. Uh, when I do my critique, I'm going to be basically critiquing Doom Emacs. I'm, I'll tr- try not to say things that will disappoint people who use vanilla Emacs because, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. But I'm sure I'm going to mix that up because I don't know much about vanilla Emacs other than the keyboarding scared me away. Uh, Wait, make- so hold on. So someone who does a review on Emacs as a Vim user is not an Emacs expert and probably won't get everything correct? <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> uh, I, I'm going to be completely honest with you and say that there, the vast majority of the time that I've been scripting for the last two weeks, when I need to do some things in my script, I just open up them. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I, the, the thing that that's the that's the reason why uh, I wanted to use Emacs in the terminal because then I could rebind it. I could just create an alias in the terminal to go to Emacs, and I could even replace my Vim alias for that and just use Emacs. So it would just open up Emacs and I wouldn't even know. I mean, I wouldn't know, but I mean, you know what I mean? It wouldn't, re- it wouldn't require new muscle memory to actually use, but it does because you can't use it in the terminal. You're not supposed to use it there and you don't get all the features. So I've had to map Emacs to a key binding and 90% of the time, I don't remember to do it. Like I just hit, I just, I mean, I'm in a terminal already. I just hit V and enter, you know, Emacs, and there's start page. So, you know, so, um, but, you know, so the, the, it's the muscle memory that's bothering me. Like, it's the, it's the I, I don't remember to open it up. Like, I spend some time in it each, each day, but I actually have to force myself to go do it because it's an extra step. You gotta remember, I don't yep. use GUIs for text editing like, ever, uh, mm-hmm. so it, it, it's been odd for me. Yeah, so those are my thoughts on uh, Doomy Max. If 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 you're gonna uh, 
you know. Well, all Gavin's asking is just spend a little bit more time with it and get used to it. It's not going to happen. I, like, I'm going to spend more time with it. I'm going to. I, I, I've had a tab open to Orgrome for three weeks now. I haven't gotten a chance to go to it yet, and I want to because VimWiki has been giving me some errors mm-hmm. that I don't know how to fix. So I would like to go through and see if maybe perhaps VimWiki or uh, Orgrome is an option for me to replace uh, VimWiki with. But um, you know. I haven't got there yet. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Well, I mean, you're like me. You like Vim, man. You don't need anything else. It's fun. Uh, that's the reason why I haven't gone through and looked at Org Mode or Org Roam yet because I, I, I'm resistant to, to I'm resistant to <laughs> seeing anything that might be good about emails that might draw me away from my precious precious Vim. Um, but we'll see, buddy. What's the matter, buddy? <laughs> Anyways, he's like, he's like, Miguel he's asked, "What was the name of the dog?" The name of the dog is Buddy. Buddy. Yeah, it's Zanium Buddy. It's the new logo. Yep. But um, yeah. So uh, that video will come up in a couple weeks' time, probably, because eventually I'm gonna. Buddy, he's such a good dog. <laughs> yes, he is. All right. Anyways, uh, I didn't. Emacs is a great OS, but comes with poor text editor. (laughs) 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 Uh, What will be our next challenge? Okay, so our next challenge is going to be... Hey, easy there, buddy. You have to watch the freaking microphone, boy. (laughs) (laughs) Bumped his leg on the desk. (laughs) Anyways, our next challenge is going to be Rice Wars. Uh, We still haven't figured out how we're going to go through and film that yet, or any of the details. We haven't... That'll probably it probably at this point won't happen until after the holidays. I'm just gonna mm-hmm. point out that way because we're <laughs> Christmas is like you know a month away at this point. <laughs> it's very close yep. to being a month away, so uh, it'll probably be after the holidays at this point. But um, anyways, Rice Wars. Basically, the concept if you haven't know, if you don't know what that what we're doing is we're both going to select a single window manager. We both have to do the same window manager, and we're gonna rice it. We're, and, and by rice, I mean we're going to do the bar, we're going to do everything about the window manager, we're going to do Vim, we're going to be the terminal, we'll do the GTK apps, we'll do the cute apps. It has to be from top to freaking bottom, like everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to time it. The person who does it in the least amount of time wins the challenge. Uh, we just haven't figured out how to do it yet. Uh, now, you did say we're both doing the same window manager, correct? It's going to be the same window manager. That way can, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, because I mean, we could cheat and someone pick Rat Poison and have to theme that, and that'd take like five seconds. Right, uh, but I mean, it, it, it wouldn't be, it'd be like, if we were, we were if we were to assign window managers to each of us that were different, like, window managers take longer to, like, if you had to theme X Monad, that'd take a lot longer than theming I3. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that is, um, that's the next challenge. Probably the way we're going to do it is we'll just record it on our own. You know what I mean? Like a, the video on our own, and then uh, we'll put it together in a mashup of video and release that as a podcast. Uh, but I don't know yet. It, it, we can't do that kind of thing. I don't know how we would go about doing it live. I just. Um, well, I, I think the best way of going about doing it would be to take ha- have each of us record, like give us out the rules and everything, and then uh, like the window manager that we're going to use and everything, and then have us theme it, each of us recording us theming it and like timing ourselves doing it. Um, and then by the time you're done and everything, you take your video, we, we take both of them, put them together. Yes, I see you, buddy. And then what we do is we both talk live as they play, like in the background. So, like, like they just watch both of us theme them Aww. in the background as we talk over it. That could be a good idea. Yeah. Um, I'm, and I'm also not opposed to us streaming a, a, a streaming on our channels the actual process of racing it. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, we could if we wanted to do that. Um. It's not something we have to keep secret. You know, it's just, it's a time challenge, not a... uh, Well, I mean, we could do something cool where we both schedule the streams at the same time. And, like, we're going to record the streams, like, you know, to to have us playback for when we do it live or if we do it live, just talking about it. Um, 
I mean, what we could do is just schedule it at the same time, start, and then that way people can have both the streams, like mute one, watch one, go mm-hmm. over, and like keep up keep up with both of us if they that, wanted to. That, that's or just root for one person. I just feel like <laughs> screwed Saney. I'm not keeping up with Matt. <laughs> Well, it, 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 it's going to be fun, okay? And one thing I know for, for is I'm really looking forward to it, but I don't want to rush into it without us, you know, sitting down and just getting all the, the, the specifics down properly. So uh, mm-hmm. that, that that will probably be after Christmas. Maybe it'll be like our – it's like we're going to do a prediction show this year um, where we go through and just do predictions because, I mean, if a podcast without a prediction show would be not a podcast at all. Uh, mm-hmm. So yep. we'll do a prediction show, and then maybe the episode after that we'll go through and do a, a the Rising Wars. Uh, we also talked about doing um, uh, Distro Wars, right? We, where we go through and we we each pick a distro that we hate, and then we mm-hmm. have to uh, defend it <laughs> to the other person. Uh, so that's going to happen sometime next year as well. That that'll be uh, the challenge after that, or the two challenges after that. So that'll also be quite fun. So yes, uh, we have some really good stuff coming up. So, anyways, that is. I think that is going to be it for us in on uh, this episode. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen2 is one, two, Patrick L. Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Nev Tools, Steve A. Sid A., who is a brand new patron. Welcome, Sid. Um, uh, if I'm mispronouncing your name, I um, apologize. I'm horrible with names. Mitchell, Art Center, Amateus, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, and the BSDs Rock. Uh, coming up next week... Uh, which will be uh, next week. Will be we'll be going through and doing a, an episode, but the week after we'll be off because of you know Turkey Day. Yep. So um, our next week topic is going to be. Uh, I think your your next one is going to be. Uh, do we really want mostly snaps and flat packs? When we're talking about snaps and flat packs, that should be very uh, a very fun episode because we're gonna be bitching about snaps for a long time anyways uh, it'll that is, definitely be a rambling one yeah so that is it uh that's it for us this episode uh we'll see you next week